like, why can't I say this word now? Document. Cause I <laughs> document documentary. Okay. <laughs> Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Welcome back to the Feminist Frame. And as you might have guessed, we have decided to talk about what every single other person on the internet is talking about, and that is Tiger King, the seven-part documentary series on Netflix that has taken the internet and the pandemic morale by storm. And here to discuss it with me is my always co-host, Olivia. Hey, how's it going? And I'm Aubrey, and this is our review of Tiger King. So, Olivia, <laughs> uh, it's almost like a loaded yeah. question, but what did you think? <laughs> um. Well, first of all, I'm really mad at the internet for making me watch this garbage. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I think. I actually didn't even finish the show. I'm so terribly yeah. sorry, but I um, knew you wanted to talk about it since the internet, you know, is shook with the, you know, events of the Tiger King. Um, So I binged most of it in one day. And I think I stopped, I think it was on the last episode whenever I was just like, I just, I I can't do it anymore. And I'll come back to it. And the next day I tried coming back to it. And I was like, I can't, I can't go back there. (laughs) Like I cannot be in that world um, again. And that's just going to have to be enough. So Yeah, it is just a lot of like saying, mumbling what the fuck to yourself over and over and over again (laughs) until it's done. And I'm so mad at everybody. I'm mad at the the Tiger King. I'm mad at the documentarians. I'm mad at the internet. I'm mad at (laughs) almost every human being that's in the show. It's just (laughs) infuriating. It is like, it's so odd because like this came about in... In the middle of the pandemic when, you know, no one had anyone else to do but, like, let this storm, you know, the internet and the world. And it's just, like, if you ever wanted something to make you fucking cheer for the virus, I guess this is it. And obviously that's a very callous joke and I don't mean it, but it is just, like, every single human is garbage. Some maybe saving graces? I don't know. But, um, yeah, for the most part, all garbage. Well, I don't even know where where uh, to start with the show. Um, do you have any suggestions? What what layer you want to unpeel first? I will say, like, if we're gonna talk about like the least of the garbage people, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I think you know Saf was one of the people that kind of came across as likable and like maybe mm-hmm. legitimately cared about the animals. And I just found out actually from watching Joel McHale like everyone else was obsessed with the show and asked Netflix to let him do a follow-up oh, and where awesome. he interviewed quite a few of the big players. And Saf mm-hmm. was one of the people he interviewed. I didn't even realize that he identifies as a man and then was just misgendered the whole time throughout yeah, the documentary. Um, I actually caught um, some article, I think, um, where it had a tweet by the um, – one of the guys who created the podcast, Joe Exotic, and he posted something saying, you know, Saf had told him repeatedly that, you know, he's trans preferred to be called Saf, uses he, him pronouns and stuff. So um, it was pretty interesting, like, I don't know, careless, I guess, of the documentarians to, to misgender him or like that. almost like purposeful if you've already been told. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that and was like, well, that makes me feel even shittier about the people (laughs) i don't know it's just uh yeah i mean i think on top of everything else like all the other sort of characterizations um um of the different people show covers is just i I don't know i think it's just showing that they don't particularly care um about showing the true sides of these people and they just have an agenda they have a story that they want to tell and then that's that's the, their focus. Yeah. There's a few, there's so many elements to this show. Right. And one is the absolutely egregious, like animal rights abuses that are very concerning and almost get overshadowed by the time you get past episode one. And then they like circle back to it a little bit in the ending. That's most frustrating things about this entire show. Like that they just forget. It's like, 
yeah, it's like a it's a, about you know animal abuse, and then they fail to like mention it, bring it up, or focus on it at all. And it's like that's what started this whole conversation, and it's still happening. Um, and I still think it's a bigger part of the story than like where you're leaning um, to, you know? Yeah, I thought that was super frustrating. Like in every once in a while, they'll bring it up when it's convenient to make one particular person seem worse, kind of, you know, like mm -hmm. with the whole Las Vegas parties and the tiger in the suitcase, Mm -hmm. Which is obviously shitty, but so is the whole thing. <laughs> like, I don't know. So it yeah. was weird how they, like, completely lost sight of that. And so did everyone else, kind of, like, following the narrative mm -hmm. of this. But then the uh, the flip side of that was, like, that they didn't really care about the people either. And then it seemed like almost... and. I don't know, the documentarians and then also largely the audience use sort of the poverty of the people to be able to write them mm -hmm. off too. And it just, it, it was really icky feeling, the whole thing. It was just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think overall, like, they're focusing on these people and these events because they think they're weird or strange. Right. Um, and and then that's where, what they're choosing to, like, highlight. Well, like you said, it kind of overlooks the abuses of the animals. And then you mentioned the documentarians felt like they didn't really care about the people they were filming either. Um, so not only, you know, is there tremendous, like, animal abuse in here, but, like, the abuse of people. Um, Absolutely. You know, like, we're not talking about... Um, Joe's multiple husbands that um, he probably just preyed upon because they're young, innocent, and addicted to drugs um, that he supplied for them. Um, but also Doc Antel's um, whole staff of women. Like, okay, yeah, we do need to talk just, about Doc Antel, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, all of these human beings. And then Jeff, Jeff Lowe, the the 60 year old that dresses in, um, you know, affliction tees and flat bill caps like that guy also has got some really creepy vibes uh, attached to him too. And I'm just like, we're just ignoring all of these just mistreatment, maltreatment, and just straight up abusive practices to like human people that are also involved in this story. Right. Um, so you just named like five <laughs> different things that I definitely want to get to. But, you know, starting with just, like, Joe Exotic and his mistreatment of people, yeah. <laughs> when it was revealed that he pays his staff almost nothing and then, you know, feeds them, like, expired Walmart meat. Mm -hmm. That was also just... Also, those caps. Yeah, incredibly devastating. And it clearly, like, they talk about how he sort of brought people in who had nothing. Yeah, and he picks up people that just got out of, like, prison. And, you know, he's like, I'll save you. Don't worry. Or who are homeless or in, on the streets. And that's mm -hmm. clearly, and especially, you know, you see from, from Saf and from uh, Josh, who works on his campaign, Josh Dial, mm -hmm. You know, that he attracts, like, some especially, like, young, queer, vulnerable people in the horrible red landscape of Oklahoma who have nothing mm -hmm. to go to. And he's sort of this, like, really enigmatic figure and very gay and proud and so is able to kind of prey upon these young people in a similar way that Doc Antle's able to prey upon young women. And I think they didn't, like, quite get into it. They, I mean, they say it, but I don't know how much time they actually spent exploring it. But they kind of imply that um, Joe's first two husbands, um, uh, what were they, uh, Travis and um, John Finley, mm -hmm. um, weren't, maybe they weren't even gay. But, you know, Joe was just feeding them um, weed and meth. Uh <laughs> And and that's kind of what hooked them, right? Um, like like they had video footage of Travis um, saying, you know, he felt like 
he was a prisoner. Like he wasn't even allowed to leave the park. He wasn't allowed to get a job. I mean, the mental and emotional abuse. Yeah. And obviously, if you watch the entire documentary, Travis's story is especially devastating. Yeah. And that it's crazy because I think both of us listen to that podcast about Nexium, and it does just remind me both Joe Exotic and Doc Antle, because they're very similar to me, are just, you know, really charismatic figures that are able to sort of assemble these people around them. And it is so fucking cult-like. Well, and oh my gosh, Doc Antle, let's let's cover him. Shall right. we? Um, so first of all, like, um, I don't know that they're wives technically, um, but how many young women does he have um, around him? He surrounds himself, but like he would prey on young women, like virgins. And that way, you know, that was their first experience. Um, but he's totally controls them. He picks out their outfits. He changes their name. He makes them get body modifications. Um his his name that he changed is his name to Bog um Bhagavan um Antle. Like yeah. Bhagavan apparently means Lord or something. Like he's basically setting himself up as the like Lord and you know controller of all of this this harem of women that he keeps. Yeah, he like made them call him my lord. And then there's tattoos too. And I was like, who does this remind me of? Of fucking Nexium. Like this is straight up a cult. And like yeah. to and- draw in these young, young women, you know, 16 to 18 and come work at a big cat rescue. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy. I mean, and then you go no contact. Exactly. He's preying off the just innocence the same way Joe Exotic is um, preying off these, you know, young men that also don't have um, a good positive role model, I guess, in their life. Or um, much life frustrating. experience. Yeah. Very, very frustrating having to watch this over and over again. And they just like state it as facts and then like move on. Like we're not going to focus on that at all. Instead, we're gonna just going to just jump you know feet first into a murder plot that doesn't have any real hard facts attached to it it's all speculation sure okay so i want to come back to that too obviously but um (laughs) before we do i it was interesting so like i watched the follow-up the eighth episode follow-up with joel McHale. And they do talk to Josh Dial. And one of the things he asks is like, were you ever worried about like Joe Exotic sort of preying on you? Or I don't know how he says it. And Josh like laughed and he was like, no, I was about 12 years aged out for that. Like he likes him young and dumb. Like he has a very specific type. Yeah. And that's the only thing he goes for. Even though Josh is gay also like actually a gay man instead of a straight man who's being fed methamphetamines Mm -hmm. so that was just it was interesting to hear him just confirm that (laughs) but yes so the carol baskin thing before we even talk about because like yeah i i don't know i think it was like maybe valid to bring up the whole thing and obviously it was a great twist in the documentary bringing up her missing husband you mean Yes. Yeah. So that whole thing. But like the fact that Carol Baskin has come away with the worst reputation of anyone, I feel like, or like has been characterized the worst on the Internet is maybe a failure of this documentary (laughs) and also sexism. Yeah. I'm just like, wait, what? (laughs) Hold the fucking phone. They definitely do her dirty. It's it's. First of all, the whole um, missing husband, like maybe she's fed him to her tigers um, theory is circumstantial at best. I've watched a lot of court procedurals um, in my life. Um, I feel like this, you know, there's obviously no way anybody could prove that in court because you don't have any evidence. But we're going to focus on that like that's truth. Um, Meanwhile, Joe Exotic over here is, you know, shooting 
fucking blow up dolls in the head that he's naming Carol. Like, 